God's word, which comprises of both the Old and the New Testament, is a miracle. Amen. The word was formed over 1500 years by more than 40 servants of God, which included kings, prophets, apostles, and old holy men of God. They wrote God's word without error, and they wrote it in perfect harmony. No modern day prophecy, no word of wisdom, or personal song is worthy to be compared to the inspired scriptures. All scripture is God breathed. And these holy scriptures are not the words of men. They are the very ruach and breath of God. Scripture is God himself speaking. And if the uniqueness of scripture is sacrificed, then the basis of all we believe is compromised. Christians cannot overcome demonic attacks without the sword of the spirit. Today as you are seated here, you must ensure that we do not lose the centrality of God's word in our lives. When the primacy of God's word is lost or it's abandoned for convenience, demonic attacks are inevitable. You can read about a great king, his name was King Jehoiakim. And he cut the scroll, he burnt the scroll, he tried to silence the voice of God in Jeremiah by arresting Jeremiah. He wanted to maintain some cultural and social superiority in his sinful arrogance. What happened? In one generation, in one generation, the nation lost clarity of direction. Do not undermine, parents, if you are seated here, do not undermine and delegitimize the word of God in this generation. Amen. We will lose the gains we have made for hundreds of years. Secondly, when God's word is, the primacy of God's word is lost, our decisions are based on blind obligations. You can ask a man by the name of Abraham, Sarah, Sarai became very restless because she wasn't giving birth. And in her impatience, she made a superficial response to remedy the situation. She called on Hagar, her maid servant, Mr. Abraham. He expressed no dissent to this enlightened reasoning. <laughs> Abraham was guilty of reckless opportunism. There was no attempt by him to, to go back to his wife and to discourage what was taking place. What was the result? Ishmael and Isaac. Thousands of years later, we're still dealing with the problem. When the supremacy of God's word is lost, our choices are driven by carnality. A king by the name of Saul, King Saul, he was given a clear and unambiguous instruction to assassinate, annihilate the Amalekites. He had no qualms with the instructions, but when he saw the sheep and the cattle grazing, his self-serving motive, motives were revealed. See, sometimes our carnal motives will cause us to depart from the word of God. You know what happened? The dilution of the word of God made him settle for something immediate at the expense of something eternal. His entire family lineage was cut off from royalty. When the primacy of God's word is lost, we concentrate on externals and we neglect character. When the primacy of God's word is lost, we will fail to access grace. Look at John the Baptist. John declares Jesus is the Lamb of God. But in Luke 7.20, he asks this question, Are you he who should come or should we look for another? He was decapitated. This happened in the natural, but it had already transpired in the spirit. Friends and family, let's return to God's word. Let us return to God's word being the centrality of our lives, of our homes, of the way we conduct business. Everything has got to revolve around God's word. Now we're going to get into something very important, which we will continue with the series on fruitfulness. If you want to be fruitful in this life, you must access God's holy word. Amen. I should have began this series with speaking on fruitfulness being directly and intrinsically linked to the word of God. 
Many people want to be fruitful, but they want to lean on postmodern doctrines to become fruitful. It won't happen. It might happen for a few years or a few decades, but it will not be sustainable over generations. The voice of the Lord is my topic, and I believe God's voice must be thundered and it must roar again. When you look at Numbers chapter 10 and verse number 1 and 2, the Lord speaks to Moses and he says to him, Make two silver trumpets for yourself. You shall make them of hammered work. This is what was the purpose of the trumpets. You shall use them for calling the congregation and for directing their movements. In the book of Revelation chapter 1, John was on the Isle of Patmos and he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. The purpose of the trumpet was to direct and it was to also call and gather the congregation. This was uh, in the book of Revelation now, a loud voice, a loud voice. Can you say with me voice? The word voice comes from the word phone, actually derived from the word phonic. It is a tone, it is a noise, it is a sound. It is a voice of the sound of uttered words or speech of a language. When you use the word phone, it means to bring forth into light. It means to shed light. Isn't it interesting when someone says to you, could you shed more light on the situation that they're actually asking for you to open your mouth and to speak? So the word is to be luminous. It is, this word for name means to light a fire. How many people have lit a fire with their voice? It means to emit by a lamp. So the voice of the Lord. When you speak of the voice of the Lord, it makes manifest, it enlightens, it illuminates. The voice brings understanding and that's when the voice of the Lord becomes a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. There is an unfolding of the hidden secret mysteries of the kingdom and that's what takes place when you hear the voice of the Lord. When the church hears the voice, remember Moses' two trumpets, when the the voice, when you hear the voice of the Lord like Moses trumpeting and sounding out those trumpets it is for gathering and it's for direction. See today we gathered and when you leave this place the voice of the Lord by the end of this session would have given you light for your directions. In the book of John chapter 10 you will read of Jesus speaking of the good shepherd And he says in John chapter 10 verse 2, He who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens. And the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Verse in Jeremiah 23, it says, I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and bring them back to their folds and they shall be fruitful and increase. I will set up, the right word is pastors. I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. The voice of your shepherd can break lack, can bring in the the courage and hope and strength that you need to face another day. Amen. The shepherd is the pastor of the house. The sheep are the people. The sheep hears the voice of the shepherd. The, spe- the, the sheep have a relationship with their shepherd. They don't follow strangers. The sheep and the shepherd go through the door who is Christ. Now, the voice ultimately is the voice of Christ himself. Now today, I want to show you what the voice of the Lord can do. Can you say it with me? The voice of the Lord. I want you to read it. And I think, Segri, you went to the end of Psalm 29. uh, But we're going to go through the the entire Psalm today. And you're going to shout. You're going to scream. Yesterday in my house, I had to keep telling them to keep it down. Keep it down when the spring bucks were playing. Now you must not be quiet when you hear God's word because when you say amen you are saying be it unto me according to your word. So we're going to read it together all of the psalm 
Let's go for it. Psalm 29 from verse number 1. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also skip like a calf, Lebanon and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says, Verse number 3, we're going to go to verse 3. The voice, and I want to give you the character features of the voice of the Lord. Young people, every day we are bombarded with many voices. When you wake up in the morning, somebody already sent you a voice note. The first thing you're doing is going onto Facebook to check out whose birthday it is. Then someone's put a TikTok video. Before you can even hear one verse, you've already had a thousand voices into your ear telling you about all the negative stuff that's going to happen. And you as a son of God, you need to go back to making God's voice the primary voice of your life. That's good. Amen. <laughs> that is the voice. If you don't stick to that voice, you will, you will be overcome with sadness. You will be overcome with depression. I, I was in the Uber this morning and... And as I was coming to church, the Uber driver was telling me, are we going to make it in the government of national unity? And I said to him, oh man, I tell you, whether we make it or don't make it, I know there's a God over this country. Amen. You've got you to listen to the voice of the Lord. Psalm 29 and verse number 3, the Bible says, it says, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The voice of the Lord is over. You know what it means when it says the voice of the Lord? There is a supremacy of the voice of the Lord. It is not the voice of any man. It is not the voice of an economist. It is not the voice of a politician. It is a voice that represents a kingdom that is above all other kingdom. It is a voice that comes from heaven. In fact, this voice is resourced and is backed by heaven. They're not limit. The voice of the Lord is not limited to earthly wisdom. The voice of the Lord has access to wisdom that comes from above. It comes from the tree of life, flows from the river of life, and imparts to you eternal life. I say that again. It flows from the tree of life, or comes from the tree of life, flows from the river of life, and it imparts to you the Zoe life of God. This is the voice of the Lord. It can drown out, it can blast out, and it will sound out every other voice. Jeremiah, uh, Job said it like this, and you know the story of Job. Let me tell you, you could could not, no one could be in a a, a situation as Job was in. And in Job 37, this is what he says, At this also my heart trembles. It leaps from its place. Hear attentively. Zoe Community Church, hear attentively the thunder of of his voice and the rumbling that come from his mouth. He sends it forth under the whole earth. He's lightning to the ends of the earth. After it a voice roars. He thunders with his majestic voice and he does not restrain them when his voice is heard. Here we go guys. God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things which we cannot comprehend. The scripture was read from Ephesians. There are things that that are beyond your comprehension. But if you can tap into that voice. And if you can submit to that voice. And if you can obey that voice. There are things in your generation. Which you never thought possible will happen. In Matthew chapter 27. This is what took place. Jesus cried out. You can read it with me. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice. 
and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom, and the earth quaked, the rocks were split, the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep was raised. Watch what happens when the voice of the Lord is sounded. The veil is torn. And you must pray today that the veil of your flesh will be torn as you hear the word of God. The veil is torn. The earth quaked. Graves were opened. The dead arose. But in Psalm 29 verse 3 it says, The voice of the Lord is over. It is over. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, the Bible says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The Spirit of God was waiting for a voice. When God spoke suddenly, that which was void, that which was without form, and that which was filled with darkness comes alive. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. And to be over something means to cover it. The voice of the Lord carries with it authority to cover that which is dark. But when the voice is released, there's a substance that comes from within the voice that releases light into the darkness. Say with me, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The voice of the Lord was over the waters of Egypt. <laughs> that God can turn those waters into blood waters. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. So as you are walking through the Red Sea, and as you are walking through, the voice of the Lord can be over the waters to drown out your enemies behind you. The voice, come on now, the voice of the Lord can be over the waters of Jordan to open them out so you can walk into your promised land. The voice of the Lord is over. Amen. I want you to know the voice of the Lord is over your life. Yeah. He's over your life. That no matter what Red Sea you are facing, what Egyptian is pursuing you, the voice of the Lord is over. Amen. And the next thing in Psalm 29 verse 4, it says, The voice of the Lord is powerful. Work with me guys. Psalm 29 verse 4, The voice of the Lord is powerful. Say it with me, powerful. Powerful. When something is powerful, it generally speaks of manifestations. But every manifestation was accompanied by the voice of the Lord. When you read Matthew 3, there was a manifestation. The dove came and settled on Jesus, but the Father spoke from heaven. There was a manifestation uh, in, 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 in the book of Exodus chapter 3 where there was a burning bush. But the voice spoke from the bush. The voice of the Lord is in the manifestation. The manifestation itself does not contain the power. It simply gets your attention. And when the voice is released, man, I tell you, there is a measure of grace and anointing released. Powerful. The word powerful is the word kawach. It means to have strength, to have power, to have might, to have force, to have ability. And here's the part we love, to have wealth. The voice of the Lord is powerful. Do not discount the power of God's voice. The voice of the Lord in a Samuel can take a David from being a shepherd boy and move him to becoming a king. Yeah. The voice of the Lord can be over Saul who is pursuing the Christians and turn him into Paul who can become the greatest apostle that walked the face of the earth. The voice of the Lord can be over a Daniel that can make him the wisest man in Babylon. The voice of the Lord is powerful. Amen. I am a product of God's voice. I don't know about you. I, I, I am not a product of, of uh, UKZN or Harvard or Oxford. I am a product of you voice of the Lord. <laughs> Who's gone to the university of the voice of the Lord? That when your family didn't look like anything good will come out of it, the voice of the Lord was over that family. <laughs> well, come on, because that voice was able to give you strength, power, might, force, ability, and wealth. The voice of the Lord is powerful. 
So young people, if you are seated here, I don't care. Don't make your genealogy and your ancestry a problem. You know, don't look at your past and say, like, like you can be like Jeff and say, your, your mother was a harlot, but God can take you out and make you a great judge. God can do anything. It's powerful. You are under his voice and that voice is able to propel you beyond all natural limitations. It will bring you out of deep, deep waters. Come on. I want us to believe God today. This is the verse. In in, in Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and powerful. That is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is living and it is powerful. Verse, the B part of this verse says, The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. I want you to read it with me. Say it with me. The voice of the Lord. Psalm 93 says, The Lord reigns, He is clothed with majesty. He is clothed, He has girded Himself with strength. Surely the world is established so that it cannot be moved. The voice of the Lord, friends, can bring you honor and glory. The voice of the Lord, listen carefully to me, will clothe you with the majesty of God. God clothes us and wraps us with His voice. To be clothed like you are today is to be covered. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, they were clothed and covered by the majesty of God. They communed with God. When they sinned, they lost their covering. That's why they needed some natural covering. And they hid. What did they hide from? The Bible says, Genesis 3, 8, And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden. They hid from the voice of the Lord because that voice was their covering. The voice of the Lord clothes us with what covers God. It's like Ruth being covered by the garment of Boaz. So today the voice of the Lord is full of majesty. When you speak of majesty, it's a term used to recognize royalty, monarchy. When you meet royal people, what do you say? You say, your majesty. The voice of the Lord is full of royalty. It brings you to the place where you govern as a king. It it brings governing authority. Because that voice represents the voice of the king of kings. You are not ordinary. 1 Peter 2.9 says you are a royal priesthood. It confers dominion over those who are being spoken to. Church, I want to really say this to you today. We are moving. You know, you know what our tagline is in, in this church? Zoe Community Church. A place where kings gather. I want to say that to you again. Zoe Community Church. A place where kings gather. I expect us, when you leave this place, let, let's start with basics. Let's start with basics. We need to teach our children how to rule in the midst of their enemies. Yeah. So when that voice speaks, you become full of majesty. Let's get a basic right, using cutlery and crockery. You got to teach them how to set the table. Which side does the fork go on? Which side does the knife go on? How do you drink a cup of tea? How do you drink it? How do you serve it? How do you serve it? Put the cup, the saucer, put the milk in a different container. Listen, the voice is going to get down to that level to bring you to the place of majesty. (coughs) Monarchs are not debt ridden people. And the voice of the Lord is speaking to you about setting up a budget. It wants to bring you to that place. The voice of the Lord crowns the son of man with majesty. You see, Samuel was the voice of the Lord over David, and he became the king of Israel. When you look at Elisha, Elisha was the voice of the Lord over Jehu that caused him to dethrone Jezebel. Today I want us to understand that the voice of the Lord must bring us, listen to me carefully, to dominion. I want all of us to say together dominion. In the original mandate when God created Adam and Eve, he said let them have dominion. Not to dominate over others, but to serve humanity. To serve And I really pray today as you would continue to journey with us on the series that each of you will see yourself coming to dominion, fruitfulness and to subduing things. But we come to a very important part of the message today. This is what the voice of the Lord must do. In the next part of the verse it says, Psalm 29 verse 5. 
the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 2, it says, For the day of the Lord of hosts shall come upon everything proud and lofty, upon everything lifted up, it shall it shall bring it low, that's what my Bible says, upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan. The verse says, the Lord splinters, breaks the cedars of Lebanon. Whenever you hear the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord must break pride in us. The cedar of Lebanon, as we look at the book of Isaiah, is a metaphor of loftiness and pride. One of the biggest problems of this postmodern generation is pride. When Isaiah heard the word of the Lord, he said, Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips. When the apostle Paul engaged with God, he says, Wretched man that I am. Can we hear those sort of words today amongst a postmodern generation? Or are we ready 24-7? Wow. Hashtag sensational. I'm not saying you're not to be sensational. But 24-7, and I think it was last week, Leila alluded to it in her message. She said 99% of the time, we are only thinking of me, myself, and I. When you hear God's word and the voice of the Lord, it must break pride in you. That's why when Nathan comes to David's house and he visits him as the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord in Nathan broke David's pride. We've got it, guys. And I want to put it on so you you see it. This is what pride is characterized by. Pride is characterized by personal ambition. It's your reliance on yourself. It is an inflated self-esteem. It is delusions of grandeur. And it is entitlement. Dr. Juanito is here. She'll tell, she'll tell you that delusions of grandeur it might also be a psychiatric condition that we might have to put you on psychotropic drugs to adjust your mental posture. That's where this is equal to narcissistic personality disorder. Is equal to. This acronym is equal to it. The reason we are not coming to fruitfulness is because we don't bow like reeds in the wind to the voice of the Lord. There's too much of pride in us. It has consumed us. Of late, I've been saying to people, concede. Concede. It's not a wrong thing to say, I'm sorry. Concede, I made a mistake. I messed up. I'm going to get it right, but I messed up. But no, you're going to say, it was somebody else's fault that dropped the tea on the floor. No, it was me. I'm sorry, I'll get the mop. I'll clean it up. But your pride, your pride is stopping you. And let me say this to you. You will never come to majesty. You will never see the power of God's word working in your life. You will remain, listen to me, you will remain in a lowly, poverty-stricken place because you're not allowing the voice of the Lord to break the cedar in you. The cedar was a very beautiful picture with the snow on, on the mountain and you could, you could really admire it when, when, when it had uh, all the snow on it. But the voice of the Lord causes pride to skip and jump like a calf so that it is stamped out. You know, Leila dealt with Daniel 4.30 where King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is this not great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and the honor of my majesty? You know, just, just, just imagine, this is Daniel 4.30. Nebuchadnezzar is using the unholy trinity of me, myself, and I. When you get married, by the way, me, myself, and I die, we, our, and us must live. So if you want to get married for me, myself, and I, you got a big problem. We already rather start divorce proceedings for you. But if you want to live for the benefit of another, I'm telling you, you will have a successful marriage. This, this is the problem in marriage. This is, why, this, is, this is why a lot of marriages fail. Because one of the spouses has an inflated self-esteem. One of our leaders said we must have our marriage seminars in the Sunday service. So here it is. Daniel, uh, Nebuchadnezzar was saying, I've done this building for myself. And, and the Bible says, while the word was still in the king's mouth, the voice fell from heaven. The voice fell from heaven saying, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. Many believers are just like Nebuchadnezzar. They become strong in their faith. They become wealthy. They become great. And they resist. This is the voice of God. This is what happens. We suddenly harden our hearts. 
It stirs up rebellion. Now pride has a very loyal friend called rebellion. I'll say that again. Yes, pride's friend called rebellion. People who are rebellious are resistant to authority. Now, we have some educators that are here. They will tell you 30 years ago, children would say, when, when ma'am walked in, sir walked in, good morning, ma'am, good morning, sir. Boy, sit down. Boy will sit down today. Boy is saying, who are you to tell me to sit down? This, this, I want to show you where the root is. In our classrooms at six and seven years old, the fruit is when they come to church on a Sunday. No, sorry, when they go to work on a Monday. We are, we are seeing labor courts being filled up and CCMA hearings flooding our, our, our systems because of rebellion. If only the young boy would say, sir, I'm sorry, and the person at work would say, I messed up, let me try again, we wouldn't have a problem. But you resist authority. You have enmity for authority. Then it leads you to barrenness. The Bible says in Psalm 68, 6, the rebellious shall dwell in a dry place. You watch the same kid who was 7 years old, 17 years old, resisting teachers. When he's 50 years old, he's still in the same barren place, unfortunately fruitful. You, you want to you wanna become fruitful. Let the voice of the Lord break pride in you. You will remain barren for generations. We, we must develop an app, artificial intelligence. So, so I can tell you by 17 years old as a pastor, I can be AI to you. By 17 years old, I can tell you what the man is going to be like at 50 years old. But the trajectory of his life, because he doesn't listen to anyone, he already started smoking, he doesn't want to listen to pastor, doesn't want to listen to mommy, doesn't want to listen to daddy. He is the greatest. Yeah. Old day, sunglasses, barrenness will visit you. Then it's emotional immaturity. I'm not going to read the verses there, there, but I tell you what, you know when people are rebellious, they start shouting, they start taking their toys, throwing it out of the cot. That's one year old behavior. But when you're 60 years old, you're still doing the same thing because you never got your way. You are rebellious. You lack insight. You are licentious. You are idolatrous. Highly opinionated. Highly, highly opinionated. Let me tell you something. If my opinion does not align up with this scriptures, I must fall on my fours and submit to this. There is no other way. Let me say to you, there is no other way. This is the way. This is the truth. This is the life. You try another way and see what happens to you. Rebellious people are highly non-conformist. Everybody's got to wear gray socks to school. You will wear a pink one. You will wear a pink one just to highlight that, listen, this is what we are seeing in society. You resist the voice of the Lord. Hey, the scriptures require submission. I learned a lovely thing from my wife this week. I learned about submission. Submission is not suppression. Submission is not suppression. Break the word submit down. Submit. Submission. Submission. Like a submarine going underground, but it's going on a mission. When you come to this church and you want to submit to me as a leader... You say, I will go underground because we are going in a direction and we are in battle. But there's a mission given to us by a leader that we are submitting to. When a wife submits to a husband, she's saying, husband, you have, and I hope husbands, you have a mandate, you have a manifesto. Because otherwise your wife will have to write the mission statement down. You have a mission, you have a vision, you come under the, that authority that leads you into a direction. The Greek word is hupotasso. It means to divinely arrange. To submit means to divinely arrange. So submission is divine arrangement. You submit to elders, you submit to one another, you submit to the word, you submit to parents. One more for today. Last one. Verse, Psalm 29 verse 7. The voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. We hope you hear more sounds like that in our church, by the way. I really pray for that. The voice of the Lord, verse 7 says, divides the flames of fire. How many of you have gone through the fire? 1 Peter 1 7 says that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes though tested by fire may be found to praise honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. When you divide something you hewn it out, you cut it out, you quarry it. The voice of the Lord uses every trial to hewn you, to cut you, so that you are shaped into a living stone that is placed in the temple of God. During the building of Solomon's temple, the stones had to be hewn in the quarry. 
The temple today is the body of Christ. And each of us need the voice of God to shape us, to shape us for our eternal purpose. When you are going through your trial, let me say this to you today, and I want to hope that none of you ever do this. When you are going through your trial, your tribulation, and your testing, it is not the time to seek out any other voice. Some people go to an auntie, they go to... They will go to someone somewhere to search out some voice. But the voice of the Lord can divide the flame of fire. How many of you know Daniel uh, or the three Hebrew boys were placed in the fire? In Daniel 3, they were put into the fire. And Nebuchadnezzar says, look, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. They are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So what is the purpose of the voice of the Lord? It is to reveal the fourth man. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You lost your husband. You lost your wife. You lost your job. You lost your business. But I don't know how you are standing. It's because and You can stand up and say, it's because the voice of the Lord is keeping me alive. Every day it is living. It is powerful. It divides. It divides. We are created as Jacob and formed into Israel. Isaiah 43 verse 1. Like Jacob you go through rivers, you go through trials, you go through waters. So that his purpose can be revealed. Why does God take us through every fiery... I mean if you've been... You know I think through all the stuff that we heard today from everyone. A lot of us are going through fires. Fires like you will not believe. But I want to give you a different perspective. When the voice of the Lord comes, it divides that fire so that you can see the eternal purpose of why God has taken you through that. A lot of people, a lot of people who have not been broken can never give off a fragrance like you who have been broken. Do you know that? Broken people can give off a very... Like that alabaster box that was broken. It gives off an aroma. As you are formed, as you are going through your fiery trial, you become mature in understanding what we have received. From your marriage, to your children, to your finances, to your asset, to your bank account. Everything is connected to your eternal purpose.